is Krista Renee from the 90 Day Podcast. We celebrate the month of February for our cultivating legendary stories of our American Black histories. The month of February, the 90 Day Podcast would like to highlight some of our guests who are doing great things in our American history. Hear their stories on the 90 Day Podcast. This is Krista Renee, and I hope you enjoy our Black History Month. Hi, this is Krista Renee from the 90 Day Podcast, and my next guest is O'Shea Johnson, and she is the YWCA coordinator. The month of February is Black History Month, and today highlight is on O'Shea Johnson. And she is someone very special, someone that I have met before, and I would like to bring attention to her. And she is my special highlight for the month of February. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I am well. I am well. Well, let's begin. What is your role as a YWCA program coordinator? My role at the YWCA is um, the Hartford Region is that I work for Women and Girls Department. I am the program coordinator there. Uh, and my role is a little bit um, interesting, but yet fun at the same time. Um, in my role, I am the program coordinator. What I do is I support young women and women. So I do that by um, supporting women ages girls, I'm sorry, young girls ages 13 to 18 um, in a young women's leadership program that we have there. In our young women's leadership program, we have the school year program, a Saturday program, and a summer institute program. And what we do in each of those programs is we design activities and build up curriculums for the young girls to be able to um, do different things. And so they learn different topics, they learn about different um, different things that that, that may provide awareness to them. So for example, um, for the month of January, we had advocacy. So in January, we talked all about advocacy, what it encompasses and how to become an ally. Um, so the girls had, uh, was able to break out into groups and kind of talk about amongst themselves and with their peers about different topics that they wanted to talk about. So um, each month we create a curriculum designed around special topics that we want to highlight. Uh, so that's for the young women um, in the school year. And we do the same things with the Saturday program and also for summer program as well. Summer program is a lot different for the girls that still same ages 13 to 18 as um, for our programs for young women. Uh, but summer is just a little bit more in depth. So they have more time with us. Um, it's not like the other programs where they're for maybe an hour or hour and a half. Our summer program is way more in detail. So they're with us almost every single day for about four hours of the day. And we have special guests come in. We do different topics. We do activities. We go on trips. So it's a little detailed and a little different. Um, but yet still around the same scope of services that we provide for young women. Now, I am also uh, work with women in a college setting. Um, so I work with women who um, are in specialized programs at Capital Community College and Manchester Community College. And in those programs, it could be business, it could be information technology, it could be nursing, and even more programs that we specialize in support in. And our goal for women in those programs as we're coaching them is to help them to get to a sustainable career. So we wanna make sure that Women, when they get into college, when they get into college, whether they have a family um, and they're working, we want to help them get towards their long-term goal. So we noticed that there has been research that has gone on that says, you know, sometimes women in certain areas have a hard time sustaining school, and there are many disparities that comes with it or comes at them. So we designed a program at the YWCA. Um, that helps women towards their goals in college to be able to obtain a job or career that's going to sustain them and their families. Wow. And how long have you been in that field? I've been in my role for three years. And it, the way you talk, it seems like it, you've been in here for like 30. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 
sometimes it does feel like it. I mean, I love what I do. I'm very passionate about it. Um, it motivates me just being able to be around the young women and then being around the women it constantly you're learning something every single day so you're learning from the women you're learning from the young girls and it just keeps me going so um, it's something that I truly embody every single day I mean it's me at work but it's also me outside of work and I see you have a very structured program you build on activities, you build on self-esteem, you build on self-education. Um, that is very powerful because you they leave there with something. Right, right, exactly. So um, our, our curriculum-based um, program for the young women is, is, is exactly that, designed to provide them activities. So we don't want them to feel like they're going into, like they're learning something from school again. We don't want them to feel like they're in a classroom setting. But we want to empower them. We want to encourage them. We want to provide them something that they can leave and say, yeah, we learned something from this, but at the same time, it was fun. It was educational, and I feel empowered at the end of it. So our activities is learning-based at the same time, educational, but we also want them to feel fulfilled at, after it. This might spark up some, uh, you know, some career opportunities for some of our girls. Um, some of them, they go in and they have, they may have nursing on their mind. But they may leave and say, you know what, I actually might want to go into politics or I might want to be a lawyer um, or I might want to do something um, in law enforcement. It may change. Um, and so that's what we're all about is providing them different routes and different um, different ways of, you know, education to be able to open up their minds more, uh, you know. I can say for me, I was actually in this program when I was a young girl, so I was a part of it. And I remember going in and I'm thinking, you know, hey, I want to do psychology. But as I, this was actually the pivotal program for me as a young girl at the age of 14 mm -hmm. or 15. I can't remember the age, it's been a long time. <laughs> but at that age, I had a mindset of what I wanted to do. And then this program. I was in it as a young girl has shaped and changed what I wanted to do. So I actually learned from my um, from my leaders at that time and saying, you know what, I want to do something that evolves around uh, programming. So I eventually end up kind of leading in that pathway. So that's our goal and our mission is to be able to provide awareness to our girls. Um, we just don't want it to, to feel like they're in an educational, you know, that you're just in school. But we want to make it fun and learning at the same time. Now, the women, the young women that are in this program, are, are they battered women or they don't have to be battered or abused women, correct? Correct, absolutely not. So um, for our uh, women's program, it's called the YW Career Women's Program, and that's at Manchester Community College, Capital Community College. And it does not have to be, you know, we accept women who are in, um, who are already enrolled into um, either Capital or Manchester. And uh, we have opened up our um we have opened up our studies to a broader to support more women with families. Uh, so what we do is we we, we kind of um, we have a, a set base at each campus so at Manchester and Capital. And what we do is we recruit, recruit from there. And um, women who come into the program, it's really just a conversation. We just want to meet women where they are um, to be able to support them. Uh, there's many gains out of this program, um, not only just incentive based, but being able to have someone who can um, kind of be like a listening ear to help you with some guidance or help you around the campus on uh, different resources that you didn't know about, different scholarship act um, information that may be um, to their fingertips. So it's just another person, additional support who can really help them and at that a woman can understand what um, some of the things that they have been through. Okay. Or yeah. in the college Name something that motivates you while coaching other women. Something that motivates me, I think just, um, I think just being able to support women. Um, a lot of times, it's have, it's listening to the stories that they're coming in. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women are, of course, at first very shy. Um, of course, with my bubbly self, I'm like, hey, and I just start off conversations. And it does take a lot of, it, it does take people some time to kind of get to know the person, right? To feel adjusted and feel comfortable. But I think what motivates me is um, where I can best support them. 
But when they have the opportunity, when they get that time to be able to open up with me, I'm able to really hone in where they need their supports with. And just being able to provide resources, just being able to provide a little bit of support, whether it's within a subject, whether it's different ways to study or, you know, whether it's trying to navigate to something. Um, that really, like, it motivates me. It empowers me because I'm like, I just want to help as much as I can. But I also um, learned throughout this process being here for three years and also from some of the other um uh, jobs I've had before, um, I learn from these women. I learn from women as well. So they teach me just as much as I'm teaching them. I'm learning from them at the same time. So it always gives me a burst of energy, always makes me feel good to continue to do the work that I'm doing. And it sounds like and you can hear it all in your voice. No, thank you. You're one of those people that wake up and enjoy going to work. Even, yeah. on, the, even on a Monday. <laughs> Where yeah, people are like, oh my God, it's Monday. I don't feel like it. Not you. You get up and do the happy dance and go to work. <laughs> I can tell you that um, I'm very creative and um, I, I, you know, my creativity goes so far sometimes that I have to always write it down. You know, I want to like write down every single thing that comes in my mind. And I can tell you that. There's a million and one things that goes to my mind on how to provide education to the women and to the girls. Mm -hmm. And I'm just always thinking of ways that I can provide some type of information, opportunity, something that's going to evolve them to the next level. Right. Um, you know, by inserting it in uh, a form that's an activity, whether it's we standing up, playing a game, throwing a bean bag, saying empowering words to each other. Right. Or just having a session where we're just like talking about what's going on today where we are and venting it out um if there's growth that happens in those times there are things that are changing um you know someone in that moment in time Absolutely. and I, I, it, that's my mission and my goal is just to be able to um spread this awareness spread this um empowering to each and every girl and woman um, because on the day to day there's so many things that interferes there's so many things that happens and we become discouraged uh, we, we can often feel like you know listen I'm gonna give up school because that's the last thing on my mind I got kids to worry about I got career to worry about I got all these other things that's going on so the last thing I'm gonna think about is uh, college or paying up paying some type of bill to <laughs> pay bursars off just, just to get into a class um, but, you know, having someone there to say, no, we're going to get through this and this is how we can get through it um, will, like, really help and support that woman where she is um, because it's so easy to give up. And that's that's my mission. Every time I wake up, like you said, every time I wake up, I'm, I'm thinking on how can I um, empower these girls? How can I motivate them? There's something that I want to provide to help them to keep going. Now, have you ever had a relatable experience to one of the girls' situation um, that that they could relate to and you could relate to, too? Um, I think uh, for the girls, I would say um, speaking up, um, just being able to get in front of people and talk. Okay, <laughs> yeah. For the girls, um, a lot of times they're so shy, and um, a lot of them have a hard time public speaking. Um, that's something that they like they, if I come in and I call on them, they're looking at me like this. Like this is not, we're not doing this today. <laughs> um, but <laughs> and it comes from you know just it's confidence. Like, do I have what it takes to say? Is everybody gonna listen to my voice? Um, you know, what's gonna be different that they're gonna take away from? Um, and I think I have been in their shoes before. I know what it feels like, even being an adult and adulting. Um, I, I've had to come over that. And the way that I came over that fear was just constantly challenging myself. Um, I had to take on those challenges that would put me out there doing something like this, putting my voice out there, or, you know, just speaking up and if I mess up, just keep going. You know, um, people in my life, my family, my husband, they always tell me, like, if you mess up, just keep going. You know, you make a mistake, that's all right. You, you pick up and you keep going. You keep going. Um, yeah. The, 
Right, exactly. So if we stay stagnant and we, you know, put our heads down and think that, you know, this is it, you know, we will we'll feel like we can't overcome that fear. Um, so I know what it feels so like. And there's many of our girls, even women, who um, have a hard time with that. But I can say that at the end of the year or by the end of the semester, I have women who are saying, um, listen, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, do this uh, assignment where I had to go up and speak in front of everybody because we're constantly challenged. You know, we have conversations. Speak to yourself. Talk to yourself. You know, practice those questions. Um, and same for the girls. It's okay. Speak up. We're going to read this off the bulletin board, but guess what? We're going to do better next time. You're going to feel confident next time you go up there. Right. <laughs> so it's, and that's part of what we do in our activities is a lot of public speaking um, because we want we want our girls to see the confidence that they have inside and who they are destined to be. Um, and they can't see that if they're just sitting and they're sitting quietly. Absolutely. And you, you, you know what? You sound so very assuring, very strong. What are your strengths? What do you My, consider your strength? Oh man, <laughs> no, I, <should> <laughs> um, I think my motivation. I think um, my energy. I would say. Mm. Um, I, I just I have this thing where listen, life can hit you, and you can go through a lot of different things. But my energy and my resiliency to constantly just keep going is is like no other. Like sometimes I surprise myself. Um, just to be able to get up and say, all right, if I'm driving to, you know, school and, you know, I'm probably depleted from doing all the other work that I did earlier, but there's a burst of energy that I get to be able to do what I do continuously. Um, just being able, and I, and I'm thrilled that energy comes from seeing these young women. That energy comes from the work that I'm doing. So whether it's me typing up a curriculum, putting it together, I'm just motivated. Of course, my mind goes to like five different exciting creative ways that we can do it, whether it's doing it in a video and, you know, losing track on that or, you know, doing something different as, as far as activities with the girls. I just constantly get motivated by that. So I stop myself. I would say that that's a strength of mine. Um, my, my relentless energy of constantly going and not stopping. Right. And what do you consider your weakness? Oh, not stopping. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, confident. I would say I struggle with confidence sometimes too. Um, and this is very vulnerable, just being able to say that. Um, going out there and uh, being able to continue to do what I do, uh, sometimes, you know, you can get discouraged very easily. Um, yeah. And that discouragement can give you lack of confidence or, you know, feeling that you are providing enough or doing enough. Um, I would say that that can also uh, be sort of somewhat of a challenge. Mm, that is so good. And my last question, what would you say to young women today when it comes to their dreams? Um, I would say go for it. Um, when it comes to your dreams is, you know, you're going to get challenged all the time. Um, there are going to be many, many, many life obstacles that are going to come at you. Um, but never give up on what you're destined to fulfill your purpose, um, and what you love to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, I not have thought that I would be where I am today if, um, if I gave up when I was in grad school, um, you know, many things came at me and you know i was put down in many different areas on my writing or you know how i you know put something together and i could have stopped i could have became discouraged then but i did it i just kept going i i changed my own mindset and i continue to push forward and my my advice would be to if you want to go for something and you feel strongly and passionate about a certain area but it challenges you Challenge that challenge back and push forward. And it may not be easy and it's okay to take breaks. It's okay to stop. It's okay to pause. It's okay to be in that moment of, you know, just um, kind of somewhat depleted. But never give up on yourself. And that's what I would tell anybody, any young woman, any uh, um, woman who I work with or anybody. Never give up on yourself because you will surprise yourself in the end. 
Well, I appreciate you, and I, I think you are phenomenal at what you do. Um, you, you sound so very confident. I mean, you sound like you are the owner, the CEO, everything above. I know your, your, your um, supervisor is very proud that she has someone like you who are who who could who could just take um take the initiative to just do things on her own without being um hand fed you know, mm-hmm. you know? and mm-hmm. a lot of companies they like that to have an employee who could just take on the challenge without being told what to do step by step by step by right. step and you you just seem like that type of person that Okay, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to write it down and I'm going to go for it tomorrow because I have a plan in mind. And I I, I just, I embrace that. I really embrace that. I couldn't take all the credit. I can't take all the credit, but I will say that I have um, an amazing um, team and group of women who are behind me in my work, uh, who motivate me, who encourage me. Uh, who actually show me uh, my own strengths. And sometimes, you know, I push back, I give them my little sass, but they push back on me on um, the levels that I can reach in a pain. Um, so it, it, I mean, again, motivates, you know, being a part of something that empowers, you know, I've, I've had my challenges, um, but to have a team who has pushed me and said, no, listen, we know you you know your goals you know you where you want to be and that creativity that you have inside you want to see it shine um so you know again that that's the amazing part of what i love to do and i'm very true i'm truly blessed and thankful for where i am and where i will um you know grow to be as well because uh even though it wasn't easy uh just being able to have the platform that i have to even do this and speak about what i do um, that's an amazing accomplishment and feeling well, listen, it was a pleasure talking to you and um, the 90 Day Podcast would like to highlight some of our guests um, like yourself and you. who are doing great and amazing things. And I am so happy that I chose you to be one of our highlights for the month of February because you are so, so, so phenomenal. And I am proud that the YWCA have someone like you who are embracing, encouraging, and motivating these young women um, to do better in their lives. Thank you, I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You enjoy your night and thank you for the opportunity for interviewing with me today. Thank you. Okay, good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Well, this is Crystal Renee from the 90 Day Podcast. And again, that was my guest, O'Shea. Very awesome, very young, talented woman. I appreciate her dearly. And listen, the month of February is our Black History, and she is one of our highlights for this month. And like always, thank you for listening to the 90 Day Podcast. See you later, everybody.